Mary Ling, clinical psychologist here, coming to you live, I hope, from my page and not somewhere else. Let me just make sure that I am in the right page. I've got a very interesting topic today. It's what self-care is and what self-care isn't. And um, in the process of actually preparing to come live, um, I found some interesting bits of information and, and I can't wait to share that with you. Just got to make sure I'm on the right page. I have a notorious habit of posting from places where I'm not supposed to be. It's like being late and turning up for a very important date in the wrong space next level, which has happened to me. I'll tell you this story. I don't mind um, sharing this with you. Once I actually took a friend of mine to the movies, uh, all hyped up about the movie that we were going to see. It was a chick flick. Um, and it was a lovely, you know, sort of uh, one of those opening night type scenarios where you had champagne and you had lovely things and here we were going to see a chick flick and we proceeded to the theater got settled in comfortable the movie begins and something's not computing this does not look like a chick flick there's lots of guns and blood and gore and yes we were in the wrong cinema I took my friend to the wrong cinema. I'm capable of doing those things. If there was a GPS that could navigate me from here to 50 meters, I would actually benefit. Greetings, Tess. Hey, you yourself. Thanks for joining me. I'm talking about self-care today, but from a very different angle, Tess. I'm glad that you've hopped on. Okay, let's talk about self-care. So, um, hey, what are you up to, Tess? What are you doing today? Are you... Are you at home? Are you working? Are you recovering from your very exciting trip to Las Vegas? Let me know. I'm going to refresh and make sure I get all the comments here. Okay, so self-care. So I actually did a little bit of a search to find out where this term self-care came from. Where on earth does it come from? I mean, it's thrown about left, right and center these days um, with all kinds of connotations and people have all sorts of opinions about it. Catching up from a cafe. Ooh, love to see a picture of what you're having. Um, so self-care, uh, when I actually look at it, there is two, um, two things that I'd like to say about self-care is when you actually look at the term self-care and you do a bit of a, of a search on it, in healthcare settings, self-care is actually quite an important uh, philosophical and policy-related uh, concept because self-care basically means that in the management of one's care, physical and medical care, self-care is a self-directed, choice-driven controlled um, thing that an individual is able to have over their own health. That is, they're able to have access to their health records, they're able to direct and knit structures uh, around themselves for their own medical and health care. And it basically points to a philosophy of medical care where you're not actually dependent and reliant on government structures or external bodies to provide you with the care or to make it accessible to you. So it is very much about making your own care um, under your own control. And when self-care from a medical and health perspective runs smoothly, it also means that the burden of overall care in terms of government funding, insurance, and if you actually think about it, in terms of your own external structures, your family um, and, and feeling a degree of helplessness reduces. Right. So the idea of self-care in healthcare settings is really important in terms of making sure that the overall well-being of a person's physical health and medical needs are well within their mastery and their control um, and, and their freedoms, if you like. Right. The second place I found the concept of self-care coming through was in the socio-political realm. Now, this is interesting. 
So uh, at a time, um, I think I was looking and, and doing some cursory reading. I need to read a little bit more deeply on this, but probably, um, <clears throat> you know, in, in a period of time where women's rights, racial discrimination, um, the rights of minority groups was heavily being uh, not just debated, but the freedoms being advanced. Um, and, you know, people were were arguing and fighting for these rights. Self-care as a concept became pivotal for the ability of the individual to remain buoyant and resourced to continue the fight, right? So the idea in self-care there is that in light of dis social and political discrimination and prejudice, the individuals need to make sure that they were mentally and physically resourced because this was the basis of their fight for equality. Wow, self-care next level. This is where the history of self-care comes from. Um, so for me, when you actually look at where, you know, language is so powerful, right? Words don't just appear like a cloud on top of someone's head and it becomes a reality. There's often a history behind it. There's often a, um, a story and a climate and a sociopolitical or, you know, some kind of context from where it comes from. And so self-care is about the preservation of the self to maintain freedoms, to engage in responsibilities, and continue to advance in whatever pursuits or whatever um, passions or whatever causes that they're fighting for and making sure that their body is resourced. Now, one of my geeky pastime uh, things that I like to do is to actually study trends. <laughs> Um, I actually really love looking at trends and I thought I would hop on and just have a look at Google Trends in terms of the trends for the word uh, for the term self-care uh, being searched, right? And interestingly enough, when I looked at a five-year period in Google Trends, whether it was just Australian trends or whether it's worldwide trends, there has been a steady increase in the an amount of times that people or, are, are actually searching for self-care. Now, that could be anything. That could be looking for books or that could be looking for information. Uh, it could be anything, right? But there is a steady increase. And here's some interesting um, stats. If I can find it now. Web search. Oh. Yeah, my computer has chosen to freeze at a most inopportune time. Let me see if I can <clears throat> rely on my memory <laughs> to give you those statistics. I think there was something like a 600% uh, ink. Oh, here it is. Okay. All right. So in terms of, you know, in that five-year period when you're looking at uh, the rise of the search of self-care, <clears throat> There was a 550% increase in self-care quotes. Looks like we're all using the same strategy. We're Googling these beautiful pictures with self-care quotes. 550% increase. There was a 170% increase um, in self-assessment. Not quite sure what that means, but something to do with self-awareness, perhaps. And a 110% increase in self-care plans. By the way, Center for Effective Living, we do resiliency care plans. We actually audit all of your strategies and all of the dimensions of your life to come up with your individualized resiliency plan. Small plug. And there was a 70% increase for looking up self-care strategies. So apparently, self-care is a big topic on the rise. Okay, so a little bit of context about uh, where, the, where the phrase comes from and really what it's meant to be doing for us. Tess is saying, untouchable time, 100%, absolutely. A bit of self-care for you there, Tess. All right, let me tell you now what I think self-care isn't, okay? And what I think self-care is. Self-care isn't an event. 
it isn't this self-care isn't just an event where we um have to find time in our diary and we've got to carve out a whole day to go to a spa and um make self-care happen it isn't an event it's not an all or nothing thing that you do once in a while when you can it is not an event number two quite closely related to that it is not optional you don't allocate leftover time to self-care if you go to my two um, <clears throat> uh, concepts of where self-care came from this was not leftover time this was absolutely uh necessary time we had to take care of our bodies and our minds to make sure that it was going to do the job that we set out ourselves to do so you don't allocate leftovers for self-care <clears throat> number three neither is it neither neither uh, this is where my multicultural background confuses me i can't remember i'll go with neither neither is it an escape it's not a woohoo, let's put myself in a pod and just escape from life and do some self-care. Sometimes it is. <clears throat> we do need to escape. But really, it's not really just an escape from reality and then come back. Okay, self-care is not an escape. We don't have these pods that we launch into space and we go to Saturn. Is that even livable? Mars. We go to Mars and then we have this lovely holiday and then we come back and we slog it out. No, it's not an escape. It can sometimes be in small doses. And number four, it is certainly not selfish. <clears throat> if we had to replace self-care, just take away the self. If that's what's confusing you and making you think, gosh, this is really selfish. Who sets aside time to just look after themselves? Self-care is selfish. Take away the self. Just call it care. There you go. It's just care. <laughs> so self-care is not selfish. Now let me tell you what I think self-care is. Self-care is a responsibility. Mm. Self-care is a responsibility. If you're going to be a steward of your talents and your gifts and the body that you have, well then you've got to, you have a responsibility to take care of it. That's it. <clears throat> it is a responsibility. Number two, self-care is a necessity. You don't give it the leftover times. You give it the best times. You put that first into your diary. All of that corny stuff that everybody says to you. Are you exercising at least three times a week? Are you having your meals at scheduled time? Do you have a time that you sleep and you wake up, which is regular? Do you have social time? <clears throat> Do you have time to fill up? Um, the meaning in your world you know do you have time to actually engage in fun things pleasurable things and achievable things all of that needs to be scheduled first you don't give leftovers to that you can give leftovers to coffee time <laughs> take that back we should all have our coffee and some of us not so much because we can't drink coffee anymore but it is a necessity so you put it in first Self-care is like the air that we breathe. Without it, we're not going to go the distance. Without it, we're not going to just survive. Without it, we're not going to thrive, right? So you've got to put it in because the body is not going to function if we don't give it the time that it needs to replenish, the time that it needs to renourish, the mental focus that we need to recharge, um, this, this, left hand side, this is what we bring to the table and nobody else is going to care for that if you don't make time to do it. Tess says, so important, guilty, your honor. <laughs> do not worry, Tess, you are not in a court of law where I am going to judge you and imprison you. There is much freedom in this exercise to actually say, if this is a necessity and if this is a responsibility how can I now give myself permission to put it on the agenda all right so that's all I'm going to talk about um, yes sometimes self-care is an event it can be sure why not you've got your candles and your bubble bath that's perfectly fine but self-care is an intentional activity that needs to happen every day you do a little audit of yourself right 
How am I going physically? How am I going mentally? How am I going emotionally? What do I need to problem solve to fill up my tank so I'm resourced for the day? It's every day having an intentional mindset. It's having weekly patterns. It's having yearly rhythms so that you're constantly caring for yourself and recharging for the work ahead. All right, Tess, I'm going to leave you. You're the only one watching live here. Hopefully other people will come on and be on the replay and um, look forward to chatting with you soon. Catch you later.